Okay, I think we're going. I think it's up and running. I think it is. Okay. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for all your wonderful comments and messages. I really appreciate it. And I was going to wait to tell you what I did. Um, but, and I thought maybe doing it with the doctor so that you guys can actually meet him um, would be a much better way of getting this out. And some of you, which makes me really, um, makes me laugh in a good way. Uh, it's funny. Some of you have already figured it out. Um, maybe most people have figured it out. Although I s didn't swear, but I thought I'm never going to do what I did. And I did it and I'm extremely happy for it, whatever it is. Um, but yes, I'm also getting some um, answers or questions rather, and I have the answers to um, what Coverdell was like. Um, yeah, I, I, like I said yesterday, I've never once said anything derogatory about this man ever. I, as a matter of fact, I tell people that I think he's one of the best singers of our generation. That compliment stopping um, from now on. Um, anybody wants to ask me about that situation? No longer am I going to be so gracious with my um, answers. I'm going to tell the truth. And he was an egomaniac, narcissistic, uh, you ask the people that w have been around him, that know him, 95% of the people will tell you that that's exactly what he is. And I'm not here to bash him. I'm here to explain something that he said about me that ended up on the internet, which was not flattering at all. And it was about a divorce. Divorces are never fun regardless of how you go through them. Just the nature of the word divorce can stir up such emotions. So I was surprised to hear how he felt about it, considering I never even showed up. I just sent my team of attorneys so that just kind of blew me away. Um, anyway, enough about somebody that none of us, or at least myself, could care less about. Um, and let's go back to Labor Day. And I, okay, I have a question. Is anybody as obsessed with 90 Day Fiance and Before like I am? I am addicted to this show. I can't... I can't get enough. Thank goodness I have a reason to stay in the house and binge watch. So I've taken it back to the first season and I'm going through these emotional roller coaster rides with these people. And frankly, I can't believe that, well, I, I don't mean I can't believe it, it's done um, because it's obviously done all around the world all the time but to uproot your entire life to go live in Nigeria um, or, and here's something I didn't realize that if you bring someone over from another country on a visa, um, I think it's called a K-1 uh, visa, if you guys break up, you are still financially responsible for that person that came over to the States. The state won't give them welfare, um, health insurance. Uh, none of those benefits uh, come from the state. They come from you. So if you fly some dude over from some uh, country um, and he decides to cheat on you or doesn't treat you well, you can't just break up. I mean, you can just break up, but just financially be prepared that you're the one who's taking care of them regardless they moved on to another person you are still their 
main source of income. I mean, when I heard that, I was, I was beyond, <laughs> beyond 90 days. I was beyond, I just out of my mind. I, I could, and the girl was still willing to go through all this. And this one character, her name is Angela. She, she's from the South and she just, oh my God. God, there is just really some reasons why certain people are single. I can say that. I can see why she's going to Nigeria to find love. Crazy, crazy situation. Other than that, life is good. Um, my daughter and her boyfriend are leaving for Europe on Friday. They're going to Paris and London and a few other places in between, but I'm super stoked for her and for Gabe. I love them both. If you're watching, I love you guys. I can't wait to share the experience via photographs or unless I sneak away and sneak over to Paris, but I wouldn't want to ruin their trip. So um, I'm being the good mom and just staying at home waiting for her to come back to the States. So, and she didn't find her boyfriend on the internet. She met him in person. And I haven't heard anybody get together like that in a long time. Although it's very, it's the right way to do it. Well, I guess there's no wrong way to do it, but it seems like the easier and best way to meet someone is to actually meet somebody and not text all the time or FaceTime with them, like actually meet the person. And once you do that, I believe that a little text here and there to let the person know that you're thinking about them is a really nice uh, gesture, but I wouldn't want to have a relationship through my telephone. Like the only reason we can communicate is because of a telephone. That in my, in my playbook is not, um, not the right way, or at least not for me. I'm sure other people will find that idea appealing, um, but I happen to be um, not one of them. <laughs> No, I would be too scared, especially one of the girls is going to Syria. Um, I, 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 need I say more? I mean, that is just Luna Tunes, Looney Tunes, Luna. I love that name, by the way, Luna. That name came to me because there's this new show that I'm watching as well called The New Amsterdam, and it's on NBC. And I am binge watching that show. As a matter of fact, I bought the entire season so I can watch them anytime I want. I, if I had to redo one of the scenes, I know the dialogue. <laughs> I know the dialogue to every single scene because I've watched each episode maybe six times a piece. That's how great it is. It is such a phenomenal show. That and the other one that I can't wait to come back is A Million Little Things. It follows four couples and one of, the, uh, one of the guys commits suicide in the first episode. So I'm not giving anything away. And it's how they all um, take care of themselves and fend and for themselves with the absence of one of their best friends. Um, it's a great show too. So the new Amsterdam and a million little things gives me such pleasure. Um, make sure they don't get canceled and have them coming back, which both the shows actually, I found out, are coming back. Um, so I think maybe two weeks from this Thursday is going to be the season opener of a million little things and also the new Amsterdam. And I'm re-watching A Million Little Things right now so I can get caught up so that I can learn the dialogue. Um, and they just, I can't, it's when I get into bed, that's what I do. I turn on my uh, New Amsterdam lineup 
there's 22 episodes and I've watched, like I said, every single one of them. So watch it. Watch it and let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the world and what's going on. And what do you think about my hair? I think it's too blonde. I think I need to, it's way too blonde for me. I'm gonna do a shadow root, they call it, where they put my natural color through the whole entire, the roots, so that it'll cancel out a lot of the blonde but it'll still be there. Blonde is the hardest color, like I've mentioned before, to actually achieve. Um, red is the hardest color to get out of your hair. Um, 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 but yeah, uh, I'm doing that on Friday, so I can't wait to break up this monotony. Um, and so while my daughter's jet setting out to Paris and to London, I'll be jet setting it to my nearest salon. <laughs> I wish I was going. Oh, well, anyway, there's there's another times for that. Other times for that. I don't know. Sometimes I get tongue tied when I do these things because I have to look at myself while I'm shooting. I can't see anything else except for the screen. So I hope you're enjoying. I hope you had a wonderful Labor Day. It's back to school. It's back to work. And don't forget me because I'll be here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Bye.